fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> days of the western United States, troops were sent into the new territory to protect the settlers from renegade Indians. But many of the commanding officers had no experience in frontier warfare. And if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains, their mission might never have been accomplished. It was the Lone Ranger's strength and courage, and above all, his knowledge of the country, that finally brought peace and security to the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Beaver Pass! There's going to be trouble! Hello, Silver! Away! battle was raging far to the north and west of Fort Stanley. On one side fought Company E of the 5th Cavalry Regiment, under the command of Captain Howard. Pitted against him was a large party of weirdly painted braves, recruited from among the several tribes who for more than a year had been united under the shrewd leadership of the famous chief, Spotted Fox. Almost three hours, the battle continued with neither side able to gain the advantage. The soldiers, outnumbered five to one, fought like heroes, and among them, two stood out above all the rest. One was Captain Howard, wounded and almost exhausted, who was to be found wherever the fighting was thickest. The other was a company bugler, young Jimmy Draper. With his battered trumpet firmly clutched in his hand, he never left the captain's side. No thought for his own safety seemed to enter the boy's head, but he repeatedly sounded the calls to charge or rally. But at last, as if realizing that their white opponents meant to win or die, the Indians suddenly lost heart and started to retreat. The retreat became a rout, and Captain Howard, seeing that the fight was won and pursuit useless, brought his lathered mount to a stop. Recall, Jimmy. Sound recall. Yes, sir. That'll do. Yes, sir. Uh, Jimmy. Huh? Colonel Morris will hear about this. Today, you were the best man on the field. I, I guess I was too excited to be scared, sir. <laughs> I think a lot of us were like that. Gee, didn't we give him a licking, though? We did, Jimmy. 
But... But what, sir? Spotted Fox wasn't with those fellas. You'll get him, sir. You just wait. You'll get him yet. I wonder... Huh? If I have time to wait. What do you mean, sir? Jimmy, Colonel Morris is paying Fort Stanley a visit. He should be there when we get back. Yes, sir. I know it, sir. He sent me to the fort six months ago. He sent me there for just one purpose. But what's that got... And that purpose was to capture Spotted Fox, which I haven't done. You mean... You mean maybe you'll be transferred? It's possible, Jimmy. Captain Howard, they can't do that. They just can't. I'm afraid they can. Oh, but... Gee, if they do, sir... Yes? Well... Well, it'll be just awful, that's all, sir. It'll be terrible. Well, it hasn't happened yet, young fella. Suppose we wait and see. You sent for me, Colonel Morris? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sit down. Thank you, sir. Captain, I've been going over your report. Yes? On this last expedition, you did splendidly. Splendidly. You gave those redskins quite a licking. You can thank the men for that, sir. Yes, no doubt. But there's just one thing, Captain. What's that, sir? According to your report, you still haven't been able to come into contact with Spotted Fox himself. Sir, Spotted Fox is the shrewdest Indian in the West. But if my plan is just given a little more time, I... Your plan? Well, I haven't had the opportunity to explain it to you yet, sir. But I have one. I'm sure it'll work. Oh. Well, let's hear it. Colonel Morris, I'm not the first officer who's been detailed to capture that fellow. <laughs> if my memory serves me correctly, you're about the sixth. And he's still at large. Exactly, sir. And I think I can explain why. Yes? You see, before this, the Army's always followed its usual strategy. It's waited until Spotted Fox has raided a settlement. Then it's attempted to pick up his trail and ride him down. You know a better way, Captain? I believe I do, sir. You can't follow that fellow into the hills and hope to come up with him. And so... And so? The thing to do is trick him into attacking the army. Go on. Well, it's like this, sir. If it weren't for the company station here at Fort Stanley, Spotted Fox would have everything his own way. <laughs> no doubt. Well, then, it stands to reason Spotted Fox would like nothing better than to wipe out Company E. My plan would trick him into thinking it's possible. You see, sir, on every expedition I've undertaken, I've led my men over one definite route. And that route leads through Beaver Pass. What about Beaver Pass? It's an ideal place for Spotted Fox to ambush us. We're under observation by his scouts whenever we leave the fort. I've taken particular pains to convince him that we're careless when on the trail. I send no men in advance when entering the pass. So as far as he can tell, we'd make perfect game. And it seems to me, Captain, as if you would. But if he's going to attack, sir... Well? I'll be forewarned. Oh? I will, sir. An Indian friendly to us is in Spotted Fox's camp. If Spotted Fox takes the bait, Tonto will warn me. Tonto? He's the friendly Indian I meant, sir. I see. Well, and uh, supposing Spotted Fox does take the bait, then what? If he waits for us at Beaver Pass, and I know it in advance, sir, he'll never live to raid another white settlement. I'll promise you that. Captain, your plan sounds as if it might succeed. I hoped you'd say that, sir. But, Captain... I'm sorry to have to tell you that you'll never be able to put it into effect. What's that, sir? The settlers have been complaining to Washington. They claim the army is giving them no protection. Washington has demanded action. They've also recommended a change. Captain Howard, I regret very much telling you that you must be transferred. But, Colonel Morris, There's I... There's no use complaining to me, Captain. It's not my doing, and orders must be obeyed. Yes, sir. And when... Will you be relieved of your command? Yes, sir. When I return to regimental headquarters, I'll send another officer here at once. Yes, sir. When he arrives, you'll take him on a two-week scouting party. After that... Well, Captain, I imagine you'll be sent back east. I understand, sir. Believe me, Captain Howard, I'm truly sorry. But it can't be helped. Are you really leaving? Are you, Captain Howard? Yes, Jimmy. But when but my... what, sir? When my replacement arrives, I'll go on one more expedition. You mean you're I've gonna... still one chance, Jimmy. If this time Spotted Fox takes the bait, if he attacks... You won't have to leave? I'd be vindicated, Jimmy. Let's hope we get word from Tonto before we go.
Get him up, Scout! Get him up! Get him up, Scout! Get him up, Scout! It was a week later that an Indian raced across country on a powerful paint. He sent his mount toward a distant cluster of woods. And when he had arrived within hailing distance... Hi! Hi! Get him up, Scout! Come on, fella! Hold on, fella! Whoa, whoa! Oh, oh, Scout! Oh, fella! Oh, oh, fella! Oh. You brought news, fella? Ah, Spotted Fox. Him ride. Another raid? Him ride for Beaver Pass. Beaver Pass. And he means to attack the soldiers. Captain Howard's plan is working. Not right. Kimasabe, this is the best news you've brought me yet. Uh-uh. It means the end of the cleverest, the most cold-blooded killer since Geronimo. Uh-uh. It means peace to this entire district. It means men and women can make their homes here in safety. Not a good thing. Tonto, ride on to the fort. How to do it? Tell Captain Howard what you've told me. Uh-huh. Then come back to this camp. Stay here until I return. What you do? I'm going to see that nothing goes wrong. Uh-huh. I'm going to cut Spotted Fox's trail and keep him and his braves in sight until I know they're headed for the pass. You take care. Don't worry about me, Kimasabi. Now go. Uh-huh. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Here, Silver. <laughs> Old fellow, it's time to travel. Hip. Uh, come on, Silver. Hello, Silver. Hoy. In the meantime, however, unknown to the masked man and Tonto, an important change had taken place at Fort Stanley. Colonel Morris, upon his return to regimental headquarters, had chosen Captain Ransom to take over the command of the fort, and he had already relieved Captain Howard. It was not long before Ransom made his presence felt. Down, fellow, down. (laughs) Captain Howard, who's that boy heading toward the barracks? That's young Jimmy Draper, Ransom. He's one of Company E's trumpeters. I want to speak to him. Jimmy! Yes, sir? Come here a moment, will you, Jimmy? Do you always address your men by their first names, Howard? (laughs) Well... Chuck's Jimmy and me, we're real good friends. He's a good boy, Ransom, and a brave one. Which doesn't excuse that kind of familiarity. I've Never always... mind. What do you want, Captain Howard? I wanted you. Oh. That the way you've been taught to take care of your uniform? Is, is there something wrong, sir? Look at yourself. One button gone and a tear in your sleeve. And those shoes. Fix them at once, you hear me? Uh-huh. I'll, I'll fix them. And don't forget to say sir when you address me. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll fix them right away, sir. See that you do. That's all. Yes, sir. Impudent little cub. Weren't you a little hard on the boy, Ransom? There's such a thing as discipline, Howard. Even though it's quite obvious you've forgotten the fact. <laughs> Ransom, you've been stationed in the east. Well, what of it? Oh, nothing. Except that I think you won't be long learning things that are a little different out here. We've found that in this kind of campaigning, it pays to let up on discipline a bit. Does the man good? Nonsense. Well, you... And your attitude goes a long way toward explaining your failure. Ransom... One moment. Well? You and I went to the point at the same time. We were commissioned at the same time. But we never were friends. We weren't. Now, I realize that it gives you a great deal of pleasure to take over Company E in my place. But although you're in command, you don't rank me. On top of that, we have several weeks to spend together before I can leave. In a day or two, we leave on an expedition. I'd suggest that until we can part company, we... Try to get along together. In that case, I expect your cooperation. Which I've made every effort to give you. Ah, you... What's that? Tonto. It's Tonto. Release that Indian. Send him here. Yes, sir. That the Indian you told me about, Howard? Yes, it is. And unless he had important word for me, Ransom, he wouldn't be here. You mean to say you're willing to believe what he tells you? Before I would most white men, Ransom. Then you're a fool. You don't... You can't trust an Indian. No doubt Spotted Fox is using him to trick us. That's ridiculous. He's as honest as... Tonto, what's happened? Father Fox, him right to pass. You hear that, Ransom? He knows we're preparing an expedition. He expects to ambush us. <laughs> You've been taken in, Howard. I t- but I'm not. Redskin, you're under arrest. What manner? You learn that in the guardhouse. Corporal of the guard! Corporal of the guard! Take this man away! <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Seized by the guard, Tonto was dragged from his horse and taken to the guardhouse. Later, he answered all of Captain Ransom's questions truthfully. But Ransom, suspecting treachery, would not believe him. That night, however, long after taps had sounded, the thin figure of a boy leading a horse cautiously approached the guardhouse. He made his way to a barred window and gave a low call. Tonto! Hi, Tonto! Who there? Hurry, Tonto. It's me, Jimmy. Oh. Look here. What's that? It's a key, Tonto. Here, quick. Take it. I just got a few seconds before the guard comes back. Key? To your cell. You can get yourself out. Here's Scout. You can make a break for it. Maybe you got in heap big trouble. Oh, I don't care. I don't like Captain Ransom, that's all. He... Oh, nobody here likes him. He ain't like Captain Howard at all. Captain Howard's swell. Uh, him good color. Gee, Tonto, if you don't hurry, I'll get caught. You wait there. If you make it fast. Uh, me hurry. To the waiting boy, afraid of discovery every moment, it seemed an age before Tonto appeared outside the guardhouse. Then... Gosh, Tonto, there you are. I didn't think you'd ever get here. Here, get in the saddle. See that gate there? It's open because Captain Ransom went out someplace. You ride through it just as fast as you can and you'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Hurry. No matter how much noise you make now, just hurry. Get him up, Scott. Get him up. 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 Captain Ransom! No, no, don't! Don't! Please, let go! Don't fix through. Don't Enough, up, Ransom. Howard, let go Jimmy's arm. He helped that Indian escape. Tano should never have been jailed. You're standing up for this, Whelp. If he deserves punishment, go about it in the proper manner. Wait. You. Yes, sir? I'm not through with you. I... I we'll just... finish this in the morning. To the well-hidden camp of the masked man... The Lone Ranger was not there on his arrival, nor did he return the following day. But on the day after that, Tonto jumped to his feet as the thunder of Silver's approaching hoofs could be heard in the distance. There and come. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. there. Yeah. Tonto, you were right. Uh, Camp with an easy march at Beaver Pass. Get there. Me know. This morning, I saw the soldiers already on the trail. He knows what to expect. Uh, they're trouble. Tonto, they're heap big trouble. Hey. Yes? But when Tonto get there... What is it, Kimasabi? You look. There. Someone on foot. Can you make him... Our way. It's not an Indian. No. <laughs> on foot in this country is in danger. Well, hip. This steady old boy. Who it is. Wait here. Come on, soldier. Come on, old fellow. Ranger recognized the figure as Jimmy Dirt Stanley. At the sight of Silver, the boy had stopped, and the masked man. Oh, what? Oh, oh, there. Oh. Are you lost? What are you doing here? Oh, I didn't know who I was. Talis told me about. Then you. Then you're the lone. But you haven't answered my questions. Oh. And what's wrong? I. Oh, Captain. I got away when it stopped to change. But what happened? It was for helping Tonto. I haven't heard about yet. But you... I see you still have your bugle. Get away from me. I. I just... Jimmy. Where did you think you were going that way of foot? Uh-huh. Hmm. No, I wouldn't. I was going to Howard got back in a couple weeks and then go away with... Jimmy, you'd better come with me. Huh? I think we'd better get to the bottom of this. <laughs> back at camp, Toto told his story. When they had finished, the Lone Ranger considered this bad. Oh, yep. Plenty. It's going to happen. You do, Jimmy? Can't hurt anybody. He thinks he knows it for it. Yes. Spotted Fox will lay... Yeah, I think you're right. Well, what do we do? You mean you don't care what happens? There's not another garrison close enough to reach the pass, Jimmy. I know, but... Spotted Fox actually attacks. Just... Spotted Fox does attack. Well... Young fellow, but when the time comes... In the mean pass each day. Captain... I'm going to ask you if Fox will be waiting for us at the pass. Oh, that's the story he told you. But can't you understand? How would I understand a number of things? Listen to the scouts I've sent ahead. They couldn't have hidden their sign that well. The spotted fox won't approach till he knows where... I don't imagine we'll give such a bad experience what Indian fights before. Not like in the quarters. Because our other engagement is... Have in each case been with only a part of... <laughs> but this time... And Tonto says he is. He'll have... As if we really plan to enter the get 
We might even plan to each third evening. So it would look as if we expected to camp there for the night. <laughs> the three forces. One would run to the pass to act as a decoy. And, four, and the others would spread out on both sides. We'd have a spotted fox into the open. Then we have him. <laughs> a lot of trouble now, I think. I t- An interesting plan. But spotted fox won't be there. With no forewarning of danger, known as Beaver Pass. On either side, the pass was commanded by hills. These offered an excellent place of concealment. The Eve was at last riding down the neck. They suddenly echoed with the shrill cries of. The soldiers at first confused were quickly rallied by their officers. And the... Captain Howard heard his name soon riding toward him. Captain Howard, fool. What are our chances? Did you see? Looked like every Indian in the West was there. Which your... eh? I saw Spotted Fox himself. Yes. It'll be a miracle. Well, we'll fight to... Let him have it, men. Give it. The battle continued, and the Indians, time after time, the one attacked, the Redskins wheeled about, formed their ranks, and came on once more. Then we're done for. I'm afraid you're right. Horseman, somewhere, Howard. The nearest is away. I know. But, Howard, if we know something... Yes? Colonel Morris will be... I'll recommend that you be left in command of... Get Here they come again. Drive them. I deliver cartridges on. gone. Men, ransom. Ransom, listen. What? Listen, man, listen. The reinforcement. Charging the Indians from behind. But, man, where'd they come from? Ransom, I don't know, and I don't care. All I know is that they're... Those Indians aren't attacking. They're putting down their arms. They're trapped. Cease fire. Cease fire. the signal to attack coming from behind to break through the ranks of the soldiers' face prints to death. Rushing forward, they threw down their arms, surrendered, and were immediately put under the guard of the soldiers. All eyes were turned toward the entrance to the pass, where, from the sound of the hoofs, it seemed as if a mighty force must be approaching. But suddenly, when the horses came into sight, a great cry of rage went up from the Indians. Horses were riderless, and behind them came a boy, an Indian, and a masked man. Come on, Silver! Captain Howard! Captain Howard! Jimmy! (laughs) What the... Is you all right, Captain Howard? Are you? Are you all right? Of course I am. But how did... The soldiers, the reinforcements, where are they? What happened? Captain Ransom, there are none. But I It was the masked man's idea, Captain Ransom. We rounded up all those wild horses and then chased them towards the pass. When I blew my bugle, the Indians thought it was a whole regiment coming after well, them. Well, Jimmy, that little trick saved our lives. Young fellow, I guess I owe you an apology, too. Oh, that's all right. Come, Tata. Uh, Wait. Hold on. Gee, look at him go. What? But that Indian, that was... Tonto, the Indian you wouldn't trust. And the masked man. Say, didn't you know him? That was the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.